Hey everyone, welcome to another tier ranking. Welcome to my tier ranking for Amanda Seyfried's movies. Amanda Seyfried. I gotta say this. I actually really enjoy Amanda Seyfried as an actress. I, I think she picks sometimes safe roles, but she does pick some pretty risky roles. And I do think with the right material, with the right director, with the right script, she can be remarkable in movies. Like, and she's great in shows too, like watch the drop in. She's solid in that, but that's a show. When it comes to movies, I, I actually have always just been a fan of Amanda Seyfried. And I might be breaking some of her movies pretty low because she just, especially in her early career, just picked the wrong movies. I still think she's just very talented. And even movies that are not good, I still think she is very solid in them. And yeah, I just, I think she has a lot of talent and I do hope she does um, better, more better movies in the future to come. So uh, I thought Celebrate Amanda Seyfried and her career so far about the movies. I've seen, I've heard, and like I know I'm missing some as usual on these lists because these are only the movies I've seen of hers. These are all her films that I've watched. And I'm going to be ranking them from S being the best and F being the worst. Let's go. What's first? Ted 2. Middle of the road. Um, she was the female interest in this one. She basically took over Mila Kunis. I, I don't know why they got rid of Mila Kunis in this movie, but Mila Kunis is fine in the movie. The movie itself is just okay. It's not bad. It's not a bad movie. I thought the first one was a lot better. The, this one is just kind of like a lot of rehash of the first film. However, there is a very funny scene with Liam Neeson with the Lucky Charms. Probably the funniest scene in the entire movie. The movie has some good laughs, but it is a bit forgettable and is a lot of rehash of the first film. But still, it's okay. Les Mis. I'm also going to see for Les Mis because this is such a mixed bag of a movie because it does some things incredibly well. And then it does other things that are complete and utter dog shit. Like the production, the editing, spectacular. Absolutely spectacular. Hugh Jackman, Anne Hathaway, even Manus Seyfried, Eddie Redmayne, Samantha Barks, all fantastic. But Russell Crowe, terrible. Helen Bodum Carter, Sasha Baron Cohen, awful. Cinematography, terrible. Some of the weird choices with the singing and the words, ridiculous. But then there's other musical numbers that are grand and beautiful and play a beautiful homage to Victor Hugo's book and the play. It's just so all over the place, Les Mis. Like, there's so much to admire and appreciate, but there's also a lot to dislike. So, it is a middle-of-the-road movie. And then we got Mamma Mia. Let's just, here we go. Where's the other one? I am not a Mamma Mia fan. Like, I, I like ABBA, but this musical, I just, I'm not a huge fan of jukebox musicals. I'm just not a fan of that style of just grabbing songs that exist and putting it in a movie as a musical. Uh, I liked Rocket Man just fine. I thought that was a good movie, but I don't know. It just the context of that movie of a jukebox musical makes sense because it's about El it's about Elton John. But like movies like this and like Across the Universe and uh, Rock of Ages, I'm just not a fan of those kind of movies. So whatever. Jennifer's Body, that's a C right there. Uh, you got Megan Fox and Amanda Seyfried, two very attractive girls in a very sexy horror comedy. There are some genuinely funny-ass moments in this movie. But when it tries to be a horror movie, it fails. It's it's so dumb, and the visuals are garbage, but there are some very funny, very sexy things in this movie. There's a lot to like about it, but there's also a lot to hate about it, too. So, once again, it's a middle-of-the-road movie. Same with First Performed. Uh, there's a lot to love and a lot to hate in this movie. Ethan Hawke, Amanda Seyfried, is solid in this movie. Cinematography, uh, there's some brilliant, brilliant music in this movie, but it's also really slow. And some of the dialogue is super pretentious. In the movie, it just it doesn't know how to end, and then when it does end, you're like, what the fuck kind of ending is that? Just, I don't know. There's a lot I respect about First Performed, but there's also some stuff I hate about it, so. Bam. Dear John, ugh, God, it's a fucking Nicholas Sparks movies, like, ugh. Shane Tatum, Meta Seyfried, I don't know what they were doing, playing in a movie like that. 
Gringo. Trash. A million ways to die in the West. I'll go D. It's not very good, but, like, the mustache song is great. I Actually, the only thing I like about this movie is Neil Patrick Harris. I think he is very funny. He is the only one that's funny in this movie, but it's, it's not great. Letters to Juliet, harmless rom com. It's 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 a fun movie to watch. It's like a date night movie, but n nothing to ride home about. Same with Art Raising the Rain. Not, not, nothing much. <laughs> that mouth, eh, that's another. Like she's got a lot of like middle of the road movies. They're not bad. They're just not great. Epic. I hate epic. I think this movie's fucking trash. I think it's such an overrated piece of crap. <laughs> I'm not like, uh, while we're young, I love while we're young. I think this is a great movie. It's actually my favorite uh, Noah Baumbach movie. And I know a lot of people might think I hate him because I was not a fan of the Barbie movie. And I'm not a fan of Greta Gerwig nowadays, but I enjoy this movie. It's a great movie about filmmakers and about living in the modern era, also in the old school era. Ben Stiller is very enjoyable in this movie. And I actually liked uh, Adam Driver and Matt Seyfried and... Um, uh, who the fuck else is in that? Naomi Watts and Charles Grodin. All great. In Time. In Time is so underappreciated. This movie is so underrated, man. I love the concept of this movie with the time on your... You have these time on your arms, and when time runs out, you die. So when you work, you don't work for money. You work for time, and when the more time you have, the rich you are. The less time you have, the poorer you are. Like, that is such a cool creative concept. This is Andrew Nichols from time here. So Andrew Nichols knows what, what a good concept and is. not quite as clever as Gattaca, but still really good. There's a lot of flaws with the movie that kind of, you know, prevented it from being, like, a really spectacular movie, but... I, I really enjoy it. I think it's an underrated movie. Alpha Dog, another pretty underrated uh, movie with a very, very sad ending. Holy shit. Love the Coopers. I don't love it. Gone. Oh, gone. Piece of shit. Scoob. Piece of shit. Mean Girls. Okay, here we go. Fuck. I love Mean Girls. I love this movie. It is one of the funniest movies I've watched. It is so funny. It's a great high school. It's probably the funniest high school movie ever made. Right there with uh, Fast Times for Richmond High. Tina Fey really did something spectacular with the script for this movie. And the whole cast is funny. The plastics. Amanda Seyfried as Karen Smith is hilarious in this movie. And this was like her first movie. And she did a great job. Acting next to like Tina Fey, Amy Fuller, Lindsay Lohan, Rachel McAdams. She really held her own this one. Really great movie. Uh, Mank. Mank is a solid movie. It's definitely a one and done for me. It's not a Fincher movie that well, feels like a Fincher movie, but it's, it's about, you know, Joseph Mankiewicz, the guy who wrote Citizen Kane. It's beautiful to look at, but it's more visual than anything. Red Riding Hood. I love the atmosphere of this movie. I love the music, and I love Gary Oldman in it, but it, it, it doesn't work, though. It just doesn't work. And it's so teen angsty, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> Chloe. Chloe has a lot of great stuff, great atmosphere, and man, Amanda Seyfried is just a knockout in this movie. But it, it's got some dumb moments. But hey, it was filmed in Toronto. <laughs> Solstice. Oh, what a piece of shit. Piece of shit. Big wedding. Piece of shit. And Lovelace. Lovelace. I'm going A for Lovelace because Lovelace is such a great movie. About this porn star speaking out about the porn industry in the 1970s and her sexual freedom and all about sex and everything. It's such a fascinating movie and such a risque movie and I, I love it. And I, I love Amanda Seyfried in the movie and I love that she picked a risky role like this. Super good film. Very underappreciated. And there we go. Um, she just has a lot of great underrated gems but Mean Girls is her best then I'm going to go in time, Lovelace, what were you? Main Alva Dog. For the C tier, I'll go with the ones that are brilliant but flawed, like Les Mis, First Reformed, and Jennifer's Body. I'll go with the like, harmless, dumb, fun movies. Like, hold on, there we go, there we go. 
go. There we go. And now, nah, there we go. Um, uh, yep. Yeah. Um, we'll swap that around. Swap that around. Bam. There we go. So there you go. That was my quick little tier ranking for Amanda Seyfried's movie. So let me know in the comments below what is your favorite, least favorite movie that has Amanda Seyfried in it. Comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like this video, please like and subscribe to this channel. Enjoy the dark side.